Hey there and welcome to today's video. This week we're talking about wedding hacks and how you can save money if you are a budget friendly bride. Hey there and welcome to today's video. My name is Jess and I am a wedding and events special designer for the Los Angeles area. I am here on YouTube to provide you all the different types of content on how you can plan your special day. So if you're new here, welcome. Go ahead and click that button, subscribe, like, comment, heart, all of the things, and I will see you guys in just a bit. All right, so the first thing is seasonal. If you didn't know already, there is a certain time we call wedding season in the event industry, and typically that can happen in about April till November. Some people argue and it would be from March to October or from April to November, whatever it may be. Pretty much when it's not raining in California is wedding season. Wedding season can be different for every part of the world, but here in the West Coast, this is the time that we call it wedding season. and. Most times when it's the winter months, you can probably pay less for venues and certain types of vendors that will have a lower rate. Typically it's for venues and you can probably save a couple thousand bucks, but um, I know I've done a couple of videos on this and it can be the difference between having a wedding on a weekday versus a weekend and you can see it right here. But. Basically what I'm saying is number one to save money is going seasonal. So if there's not a certain time of the month that you care about getting married, then you might wanna consider the winter months because that is where you'll really save money. Number two is buying your bridal dress. So I'm not sure if you know this, but there are certain years or seasons of dresses where you can get them on sale if the designer wants to close out that wedding season and to bring in the new line for the new year. So if you follow your favorite bridal gown designers or especially boutiques, they can have certain times of the year like Labor Day or Memorial Day weekend or maybe close to Black Friday where they'll have a flash sale and it can be where all of the sample dresses are on sale at a certain time and you can get them for a much lower rate. So if you don't care about your dress being a sample dress and you can get a dress at a more discounted rate and then you can alter it later, that might be a really good way for you to save some money. The third one is DIYing. Now there are certain things that you should DIY and certain things you should leave to professionals. If you are an expert at a certain part and you know that you can completely do it without any fail, go ahead and do that certain thing a part of the wedding. But if there are certain things that you might not be so crafty on, then you might want to make sure that a professional does that. But if you are okay with the outcome, no matter what you DIY, then you can go ahead and DIY. It's your wedding. You can do whatever it is that you want. The things that I would consider DIYing, there is a video that I did it before, and you can definitely click it here. But to reiterate, a lot of the things are probably more towards what you can do on a Cricut or your invitations, your stationery, the signage. All of those things are things you can definitely do favors. When it comes to floral, it can be very tricky. If you have a vendor in mind that can be able to go within your price range, then I would definitely consider a florist. But I've definitely talked about that in other parts of the video and like you can definitely rewind and go back to that video that I recommended. If there are certain ways that you can definitely DIY at your wedding, then that's where you can definitely save a big bang for your buck. Some people argue that this will either save you money or it will actually make you spend more money. And I think it really depends on the venue that you choose. You can choose a all-inclusive venue or a blank canvas venue. And most times when you choose a blank canvas venue and you're having to bring in all the vendors, you can spend more money. But I really think it depends on what types of vendors you choose, which ones you're doing on your own, and which ones that you're bringing in, and the cost per vendor. Especially when it comes to bartending or drinks, that's where it gets most costly. It's venue, drinks, and food. That all three all together will be a huge part of the wedding budget, but 
you know, if you want to do a taco guy, then you're welcome to do a taco guy and that will save you a lot of money. But if you're wanting to have, you know, plated meals and all of those things, then obviously your caterer will be a lot more expensive. But I really think it depends on your wedding goals. Going back to my point is, let's say you don't really care too much about the venue and you're okay with bringing in vendors. What if you got on Peerspace or Airbnb, somewhere will that will allow you to rent it out hourly and it's a really nice house that you can rent out, then I would go that way because that would be so much more cost efficient than going to a venue, but I think it really depends on the aesthetic that you're going for for your wedding. The last one here is ditch the things that probably don't matter or in a sense that guests will not really realize. And certain things on how you can know that you don't really need to spend so much money on is programs. People will see the programs for a hot second and they'll throw it away or they'll leave it on their ceremony chair and they might not pick it up. For some people, it'll help, but most people won't. I would highly suggest instead of spending so much money on the programs just to have you know, on your wedding website, the timeline as far as when the ceremony is, the cocktail is, and the reception and maybe the send off if you're having a send off. But you can also have a foam board or some kind of mural or something on a canvas or on an easel where it can be displayed so as the guests are walking in, then they can see those timeline areas that they'll have to be at certain places or anything like that. I think the most part for people to understand is your wedding party because they have more tasks and responsibilities to do to know where to be at a certain point in time. But for your guests, really it's only four basic points that they should know. Another thing is favors. People spend so much money on favors and most times people don't take them home. So if you really wanna cut the budget out, then Try not to do the favors. Another one is cake. A lot of times people are spending so much time on the dance floor, they forget about dessert. They forget about cake altogether. I like to have faux cake sometimes at weddings and you can have a dessert bar or some kind of table that has desserts and people can pick them up when they like. And that has been a great alternative to save some money because sometimes intricate cakes can be a very expensive so you can save money there all right and that's it for today's video i hope you enjoyed it if you did please give it a big thumbs up double tap heart all the things and i will see you guys at the next video bye